Hello everybody, welcome to another video. My name's Jamie from Wonders Games. Today we're doing an unboxing video. Now, I've wanted one of these for quite some time. Now, I originally ordered one in February 2020 from Amazon. It was a pre-order, £100 it was. But then we had lockdown in the UK, which was March 2020. And because I was a little bit uncertain with my job was secure, for my own safety, I decided to cancel my pre-order and save some money. But now, job is safe. In fact, job is really busy. So I've ordered it again from Amazon for the same price, but this time in September. 2020. But I have to admit, I don't know a lot about them, but I haven't found out a little bit from time to time through doing the channel. But anyway, let's give it a whirl. The TurboGlet 16, known as the PC Engine Japan and France, is a fourth generation home video game console designed by Hudson Soft and sold by NEC Home Electronics. It was the first console marketed in the 16-bit era, although in reality it used a modified 8-bit CPU. It was released in Japan in 1987 and in North America in 1989. The Japanese model was imported and distributed in France in 1989 and the United Kingdom and Spain received a version based on an American model known as simply the TurboGrafx. In Japan, the system was launched as a competitor to the Famicom, but a delayed United States release meant it ended up competing with Sega Genesis and later the SNES. The TurboGrafx-16 has an 8-bit CPU, a 16-bit video color encoder and a 16-bit video display controller. The GPUs are capable of displaying 482 colors simultaneously out of 512, with dimensions of just 14cm by 14cm by 3.8cm. The Japanese PC Engine is the smallest major home game console ever made. Games were released on Hue Car cartridges and later op the CD-ROM optical format with the TurboGrafx CD add-on. There we go! Absolutely superb! Now, I have to admit, I don't know a lot about the original systems. I don't know how much smaller it is from the original, but I look forward to trying it out. But anyway, I've recently just upgraded from my laptop to a PC, so hopefully it'll capture it first time. But there we go, let's try some games out. There we go, booted absolutely perfectly, first time, no hesitation. But yeah, unfortunately I'm going to be a little bit rusty with this system because I don't know a lot about it. But anyway, I'm not a fan of control pads either, but I have to admit, this one looks pretty good. But when I played the PC Engine at the Expo, it was actually our type and I actually completed it twice. So it can't be that bad of a control pad. But anyway, I like the look of it already and we have music, always a good thing when you have music at the menu screen. It's brilliant. So let's have a look at what we've got. There's a lot of games on here. Okay, I love it. It's absolutely superb. Now, I have to admit, there's not many on here that I've heard of, but the occasional one I have. Space Harrier, of course. Splatterhouse, played that loads on arcade in the old days. Now, Bonk's Adventure, I've never actually played, but that one's called Bonk's Revenge. Not played that either. Powers All Stars, yes. Uh, Air Zonk, I've heard of it, but not actually played it. Let's shoot them up. Um, Bomberman, of course, heard of that. And of course, the greatest game of all time, our time. Now if you go down the bottom right corner of the screen, you actually switch consoles, which is a really, really nice touch. Really good. And so is that. And it brings up a different list. So what have I heard of these ones? Gallagher, absolutely. Fantasy Zone, absolutely so. Nectaris, I've mentioned on some of my statistics for another long play, but never actually played it. Another BC Kid game. Super Darius, I love Darius. Um, what else have we got? Gradius, cannot go wrong with a little bit of Gradius. Salamander, superb. Ninja Gaiden, I'm assuming that is. Um, Gradius 2, brilliant. Bomberman again. Brilliant. Well, I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. But anyway, we're not going to go too crazy with this video. But let's try a few. There we go, Puzzle Stars, the story of Bubble Bubble 3. I've never played it on any other system apart from the Amiga. Chiato Corporation 1991, all rights reserved. Okay, this other game, this is Parasol Stars, the story of Bubble Bubble 3. It's a video game by Chiato, released in 991. It's a sequel to Rainbow Islands and a third game in the Bubble Bubble series. Bobby and Bobby start once again as the main characters, retaining their human forms from Rainbow Islands. However, Parasol Stars is more of a take on Bubble Bubble than it is on Rainbow Islands. And it 
looks great. Plays great. It's brilliant. It's absolutely superb. The only other version I've played is on the Amiga. But we've got arms to the teeth with an umbrella. You can do so much damage with an umbrella. Now, like Bubble Bubble, you have to kill all the enemies on the screen and move on to the next level. We have boss battles, and this one is actually broken down into different sections, different areas. But it's challenging, but I've never actually finished it on the Amiga. But it really does look good. We have four lights, which are located at the top left corner of the screen, and we have one continue. And of course, this is a one or two player game. I've never actually played this as a two player before. But of course, it's brilliant. You have so many pickups and so many power ups. It's brilliant. Absolutely superb. The game takes place on a number of different worlds, each with a distinctive theme. Each world features seven rounds, the last one hosting the boss battle, once you defeat the press in the next world. There are eight main worlds. However, in order to complete the game properly, the player must open a secret door on the final world by collecting three of the star items, allowing access to a secret world themed around Bubble Bobble and Chuck and Pop that are not initially visible on the main screen. Completing these leads to its final boss, Chaos Stiken, the one responsible for stealing colours from other worlds, supposedly the mastermind behind the previous game's villains, and the true ending. According to the Ace Magazine in-depth preview, the Mega version also has a secret nightmare world. My lord, that was all to do while doing this. So I can also pick up water. Now the more you pick up, the more you can use against the enemies. But at the moment I'm just using the basics and killing with an English umbrella. Do it in many, many ways. Right. And when I get angry, they go red. A bit like all the other games. You don't like them when they're angry. So, kill them before they get angry. And once you complete the level, you get a limited time to go and pick up as much additional points as you possibly can. Okay, first boss. The player is armed with a parasol, which is normally closed. The player can deploy it in two ways, either open in front of them or above their heads. The parasol is a multi-purpose device. It can block or shield and stun enemies, capture droplets and hurl enemies. And at many points, it can be used as a parachute. Right, now we can't just hit him with an umbrella. We've got to do a little more advanced than that. We've got to use these lightning bolts. Now, if you hold it above your head, provided you've got the power-up ability, you can actually power up to its maximum size. The bigger the size, the more powerful it's going to be to the enemies. Now, I have to admit, I have to admit, this is probably my favourite power-up. You also get a flame. It's good, but Charles, you can actually stun yourself with it. And when you get stunned, you can't move. And that gives you the opportunity for the enemies to get a few kills in. But there we go. This one doesn't actually fire at you. It just moves around. But I love the look of it. I love the sound of it. It's brilliant. So there we go. Boom, boom, pow! There we go, awarded a great big massive strawberry. Lovely. There you go, that's a lot of points. It's a very, very high scoring game. But there we go, it's brilliant. Parasol Stars. Splatterhouse, another superb game. I played this loads on the arcade days, but amazingly, I don't have it in my collection. Okay, so the game is Splatterhouse, a bit of an arcade game, developed and published by Namco. It's the first in the series of games released for home consoles and personal computer formats. The game was heavily influenced by American Sutter film and the work of horror writer H.P. Lovecraft and the homage to the violent horror films of the 1980s. Good times. Marty for the game heavily emphasized its violent nature. For example, the Turner Great 16 port of Spider House is a fourth predatory adventure warning printed on the front of the box that reads, This horrifying theme of the game may be inappropriate for young children and cowards. There we go. Can't beat a little bit of Spider House and of course old school Final of her team. It's brilliant. But yes, I played this quite a lot in the arcades, but I don't remember his mask being red. I'm guessing it's only on this version. But we're armed to the teeth with a stick. And you keep that until the end of the level, and he drops it. But you also do a crouching kick. Which is very, very handy for boss battles. Now, most enemies do take one hit to kill, but the occasional one does take more. But we have two lives, and our energy is those five hearts at the bottom of the screen. Right. Hit them, swing away, and it gets slammed into the brick wall. Really, really good. This really, really is, again, playing really, really well. Really impressed. Right, so you contaminate their heads, and then you go for another kill. Well, in this case, they kill themselves. He drops his stick, and goes up the ladder. There we go, boss battle. Okay, I remember this very, very well. Stay in the middle and use crouching kicks. I don't know what they are, some sort of worms. But yeah, kick him in the face. And then the last hurrah is the one that comes out of that enemy, which is hanging up at the background. Yes, I remember it well. It didn't get far in the old days because it gets quite expensive on arcades. But every so often, when we saw one, we always put in a few 10 pence or 20 pence pieces for a go. TV's gonna turn itself off, which you can't see, only I can. And trouble is, I can't see what I'm doing. Right, the last hurrah. There you go, I remember it well. There we go, apart from my TV turned itself off, that is brilliant. 
There we go, stage one clear. Okay, the Spinner House is an arcade style side scrolling beat em up with platform elements in which players control Rick, a student who's trapped inside West Mansion. After he's resurrected by his terror mask, Rick moves his way through the mansion, fighting off hordes and creatures in a vain attempt to rescue his girlfriend, Jennifer, from a grisly fate. Players in the game also recognise a number of Western horror film influences such as Friday the 13th and The Evil Dead 2. Brilliant. Right, we have enemies that have been hung up by their throats, and they can actually hurt you, so avoid it like the plague. But again, we're armed to the teeth with a long-range stick, which is great because you do need some long-range attacks. Because sometimes the enemies do also have long-range attacks. Now, in old-school games, there's not many games you can go into the water where it's safe. But this one, you can go in the water, but it's not safe. Enemies can be present in the water, but again, we've got a long-range stick. Now, similar to many side scrolling beat em ups, Rick can also move in two dimensional environments. He has the ability to jump and he can punch and kick. Rick also has this special attack where he can form a double kick that sends him skidding along the ground. Damage enemies he hits. Rick can also perform a low kick, a low punch, a flying attack, and also pick up weapons and various weapons along levels. Right, so I don't know what these things are. They look like mines or possibly a weapon that you get in Mario Kart. But it's fine. We can hit them and they slam into the background. Right, now the boss battle on this one, I remember it well. You're in some sort of room and the furniture gets thrown at you. But yes, I remember that from the arcade days. Right, energy's good, life's is good. Unfortunately, you can't take your stick. It's gonna drop it here and grab the ladder. Bring on the boss battle, I remember it well. Can we do it though? Right, the room is bouncing up and down. Avoid everything. Candles, picture, and even the chair has an input. We do get a little bit of warnings, it flashes. But let's not get killed by a chair. Nobody wants to be killed by a bouncing chair. Right, we've got daggers. Right. Do not punch daggers, people. He's a trained professional. Right, you want to try and get both of them on one side. You don't want one on each side. There we go, picture! So have a look at the bigger picture, shall we? It's Rick versus picture! There we go, boom and pow! It's like I've never been away! <laughs> Superb! The spirit goes out the window, but there we go, tremendous game! Maybe a future long play? We shall see! Air Zonk. Now I have seen footage of this, but I've never actually played it before. But there we go, let's give it a whirl. Next up, Air Zonk. A side scrolling shooter video game released for the Turbo Graphics 16 in 1992. Air Zonk was an attempt to create a company image via a modern punkish character called Zonk, who bears a resembling resemblance to the Turbo Graphics 16 caveman mascot, Bonk. The game was developed by Red Company, original creators of the Bonk series. Also known for the Gate of Thunder series, Air Zonk features King Jewel, the antagonist of the Bonk series, along with other enemies from the series. It also follows a sequel in 1993 called Super Air Zonk Rockabilly Paradise for the Turbo Duo, which has also been released on the Wii's Virtual Console. Right, that was still to read, however, I didn't know quite a lot about what's going on, but I really, really like it. Again, it's a fantastic shoot em up, very, very colourful, brilliant. Now at the moment we've really really gone small in size, but you can get so many additional weapons in this game. And of course you do get boss battles, and of course we have the smileys, which make a big impact on BT Kid or Bolt's Adventure, whatever the case may be. But it's brilliant. Now we pick up these additional weapons. And yes, it certainly is a really challenging but really really fun shoot map. Right, enemies have magnets. We all know what they can do. Ugh! My lord, I wasn't expecting that. What is that? Is that? Oh, that's my weapon. I thought it was the enemy's weapon. What is it? It's an inflated cow. It could well be an inflated cow. Right, we've got two weapons. No, we don't. We've got two lives. Jamie, keep up, mate. We've got a boss battle to contend with. Right, very, very challenging already. I love it. What a game. Okay, so many bullets to avoid here. Right, okay, but we're firing all cylinders. So is he. Right, two lives, what we have. No energy bar for the boss. There we go, boom and pow! Have some of that. I like this. It's got to be an inflated cow, isn't it? 
<laughs> now we're firing all cylinders. Look at that for a weapon. Yes. I'm trying to read statistics on the game, but I can't really take my eyes off this screen at the moment. So much going on. This is definitely a bullet hell. I assume that's a good thing. Oh! Are these enemies? Ooh! Look similar to other games, of course. Look at this for a weapon! My lord! Look at that! Love the music to it. Right, we've got an extra life out of all that. But anyways, read more about this game. Just can't find my mouse. Air Song is a reimagined of the Bonk video game series as a side scrolling shooter set in the future. Artistically, the game is light-hearted and features numerous designs of the environment and the characters during each of the five levels. Oh, only five levels, okay. The gameplay centers around the effective use of shooting and bombing to complete a stage. At the start of the game, the player can pick up a companion character teamed up with such as an antithelotic gumball machine or mummy with a drill attached to its head. My lord, I knew nothing about that. I was too busy reading off the screen. In order to boost Bonk's powers, the player can choose to limit the use of the designated companion characters for each level, or opt out by using companion characters altogether. Each companion character or friend can only be used once. Airzonk takes on a distinct visual style that is sometimes called a cute em up There's three difficulty settings, sweet, spicy and bitter. Now this one is actually spicy. I assume that was a difficulty setting, but there we go, it's brilliant, really good. But yeah, that boss, I didn't know a lot about that. I managed to kill it, even though I wasn't really looking half the time. There we go. Free life still intact. Again, we've gone very, very small. Okay, this is Blazing Lasers, a vertical scrolling shooter by Hudson Soft and Compile. It's a reskin of The Gunhead, a video game based on the Japanese film of the same name. The title was released in Japan and North America in 1989 for the PC Engine to 16. In the game, the fictional galaxy is under attack from an enemy space commander called the Dark Squadron, and the galaxy's only chance of survival is the Gunhead Advanced Starfighter, which is me, who must destroy the Dark Squadron and its super weapons. The gameplay features fast local scrolling and a wide array of weapons your player can use. And again, it looks and plays really, really well. Really, really good. Really good game. I'm just finding out so many games that I haven't heard of before, but yeah, I had a feeling it's going to be an interesting day. But yeah, this is money well spent in my opinion, but look at that, it's fantastic. We also get bombs, we also have two lives, and the score at the moment, 9,300. And we're getting so many weapons, and I'm assuming one weapon will cancel out the other one. Blazing Lasers was produced by the same personnel who developed the other video game series such as Pyro Pyro and Super Bomberman, as well as other games such as the Danak and Guardian Legends and Doremi Fantasy. Mylan's Doko Doki Adventure. It was one of the first games released in Turbo 16 and was received critical acclaim for its graphical capabilities. Lack of slowdown, intense gameplay and sound. The Blazing Lasers version of the game was released on Wii's Virtual Console service in North America, Europe and Japan. But again, it's brilliant! Look at all these weapons, there's so many weapons going on here. But yeah, I'm assuming one cancels out the other one. We also get shields and we have bombs which you have to fight by pressing the one button. Was it the eye button? Was it an eye? But anyway, it kills everything on the screen. But a lot of these shooting ups have that. But there we go, that's what it looks like. There we go, total destruction. There we go. Now these weapons are going round me. I'm not actually sure what their purpose is at the moment. But they're not doing a lot of damage. But I'm assuming it has some sort of purpose. But again, it's brilliant. Look at this. This is some stream firepower. Boss battle on the horizon. Three lives, 11 bombs. Let's hit it with a bomb, shall we? There we go. With this, it should be a breeze. Look at that. Didn't stand a chance. <laughs> Brilliant game. What a game. Fantasy Zone. Another fantastic game. The only time I've played it is on the Master System. Okay, this is Fantasy Zone, a 1986 arcade game by Sega, and the first game in the Fantasy Zone series it was later ported to a wide variety of consoles, including the Sega Master System. The player controls a sentient spaceship named Opa Opa, who fights an enemy invasion on a titular group of planets. The game contains a number of features typical to the traditional shooter. The main character, Opa Opa, is sometimes referred to as Sega's first mascot character. And it's brilliant! Played it on the Master System in the old days, and also there was actually a version on the PlayStation 2, which is a remake for a Sega compilation, which again is brilliant. But it's challenging. 
But again, it's very colourful, and again, it plays very well, really, really well. But you do get a warning when the enemies are going to fire at you, because they will flash. At the moment, we're fine just the basic weapons, but when you kill an enemy, you get a coin. And you've got to try and collect. Use it to buy additional weapons. And the coins are not as difficult to capture as it would be in Blood Money. But at the moment, we're just firing just the basic weapons. And I assume you get a bomb. It says one bomb at the top. Which I don't remember, I have to admit. Now, these are the ones you've got to try and kill the most. Now, at the bottom of the screen, there's a guy that tells you where they are. Find them, kill them, and you go on to the boss battle. I believe there's ten of them. I'm assuming there's ten. But anyway, you can scroll left or right. But it can be a bullet hell. Move if you can, so keep the enemies at bay. Alright, another one gone. Deflated he is. Right, okay. Brilliant. Really good. Right. Three to go. Easier said than done, we've got so many things shooting at you. Continuously. Right, gold. Not a lot of gold. 50. That's not going to get me very, very much. Right. But yes, we've definitely got to do some streams on this. In the future. Right. Nearly there. One to go. And luckily, he's close by. And the bosses are very, very changing as well. It's around here somewhere. There you go, I see you. There you go. Good pal. We've got the boss battle. That coin got away. Right, where is it? There he is. Great artwork. He shoots from his mouth. And that's what we got to shoot. I think that is his weakness. It's a tree stump. Right. So far, so good. He's firing up more than me, but he's about the same speed as me. There goes the bomb. Oh, okay. Doesn't do a lot, really. Well, it does, but if you're not close to it, then yes, it's, it's meaningless. That'll work. Right, there we go. Boom and pow! Have some of that. And he disintegrates into lots and lots of coins. Collect them while you can, Jamie. In the limited time we have. Right, we're going to the shop. Okay, we have wings. We also have turbo engines, laser beams, jet engines, rocket engines, and wide beam. Now, quite a lot of these are very expensive. We have $3,150. So, we're going to buy a laser beam. I like the sound of that. We'll go for a laser beam. Sold out. We'll go for a jet engine. Sounds good too. And we'll go for some wings. Which is a cheapest thing in the shop. But anyway, we don't have a lot left. We'll go for a wide beam as well. Why not? Let's spice it up a little bit. Go for it. We're firing all cylinders now. Okay, look at this for a beam. Look at that. And we are slightly faster. So now we've got to kill these little dudes. They do take quite a lot of hits, even with this firepower. There we go, he's deflated. Okay. Now the game design of the main character is similarities to the early Twin B, and together the games are created with the creation of a cuter up subgenre. Numerous sequels have been made over the years. Ah, your weapon has worn off. Ah, I don't remember that. Oh my lord. Right, this is a bullet hell. Ah, I don't remember the bullets wearing off like that. Hmm. Whoa, okay. What was that? What was that? I don't think that was an enemy. That was something else. Again, I don't remember that. But yeah, I didn't own this on the Mars system in the old days. But a lot of my friends did. So it's nice to play in the old days. Oh my lord. However, I do have a Master System in my collection now, but I don't have this game as a physical version. Maybe in the future. Right, okay. It's quite difficult to collect coins when there's so many things on the screen at once. But that's shoot much for you. And that's why I love them. Okay. That got me... three. Oh my god, what are they? Right, okay. Yeah, my lord. Okay. What a game. Brilliant. Plays really, really well on the PC Engine. Oh. It's very handy to get that warning before they fire. In the game, the player's ship is placed in a level with a number of bases to destroy. When all bases are gone, the final boss will appear. 
We must be defeated in order to move on to the next stage. There are eight stages in the game. All in all, except the final one, the scroll is not fixed. The player must move either left or right, although the stage loops. The final level consists of a rematch against one of the previous bosses in the session before facing the final boss. Opa Opa uses two different attacks, the standard weapon and the bombs. You can also move down and land on the ground by sprouting feet and walking around until you can fly again. Right, another great boss, which is firing all cylinders. I'm not quite firing all cylinders, but at the moment we've got a good rhythm going here on here. We've got a good system going on here. And I'm staying alive, which is a good thing. Right, got to keep shooting those circular weapons that go around the enemy while avoiding his floating bullets. And again, he's falling to lots of lots of pieces and lovely, lovely coins. Fantastic. There we go. There we go. I'm assuming that means Bonk's Adventure. I'm assuming. But there we go. I'm playing this for the absolute first time. Copyright 1989, Hudson Soft, 1989, Atlas Limited, and Red. Okay, this other game is Bolt's Adventure. A scrolling platform game developed by a big company and Atlas and released in 1989 in Japan and North America in 1990 for the TurboGrafx-16. In Japan, it was titled PC Genjin, a play on the Japanese name of the system, the PC Engine. The first game in the Bolt series, it was followed by two more games for the TurboGrafx-16 before branching out on other platforms. Bolt's Adventure was ported to the NES and Amiga as well as being released as a coin up operated arcade game under different titles FC Genjin and BC Genjin. A completely different game was appeared on the Game Boy under the title GB Genjin in Japan. And it's brilliant! I have to admit I'm a big big fan of BC Kid. I've long played it on my channel, but this is again brilliant. Now Fratified did a tremendous job with BC Kid, it is brilliant. So it looks great, plays great, sounds great. Now we have two lives and of course we have our energy at the top left corner of the screen. Now this character goes crazy for meat. When you pick up a small piece of meat, it goes a little bit crazy, which makes your powers a little bit stronger. Pick up another one before the other one wears off and you go even crazier, making you invincible for a short period of time. You just run into the enemy and you're safe. The only thing you're not safe from is falling into a bottomless pit. But this game doesn't really have a many bottomless pits at all. But again, we've got to pick up these smileys, which gives you additional points, but only at the end of the level when you defeat the boss. But again, it looks and plays well. Now once it's worn off, you then slowly downgrade back to your normal self. Your normal look. There you go. The game's protagonist is Bonk, a strong bald cave boy who battles dinosaurs and other prehistoric enemies. Bonk's mission is to rescue Princess Zar who has been kidnapped by the evil King Drawl, who is a large green Tyrannosaurus Rex type dinosaur. In the arcade version, Bog is assisted by a female version of himself. I have played it, it was for the score challenge, it's a really good game. Maz has got a fox though, but you can actually do the levels in any order you like. Now if you pick up a great big massive piece of meat, you go from normal to absolutely off his face. There we go, just like that. Make you invincible again. Just run into the enemies like a crazy man. And keep picking up those smileys. A bonk attacks enemies by bonking them with his large invisible forehead. Bonk starts the game with three hearts worth of health, which are depleted to blue as bonk takes damage. And three extra lives. Bonk's health can be restored in increments of collecting fruit and vegetables. Now, fruit and vegetables are very, very good for you, and they're also very, very good for you in this as well. It doesn't give you a lot of energy, but it's better than nothing. Right. We're still. In a bit of a crazy form. Now also, when you're in this form, you can do shockwaves by hitting the ground with your head, and that stuns any enemy on the screen. But only for a short period of time, enough time to get a decent hit in. Right, now use these to get to higher ground. So I just have to admit, it's probably a little bit easier with a control pad, I have to admit. There we go. Okay, next level, which takes players on the back of a triceratops. Watch out for his spikes. And watch out for the occasional enemies, including slugs. Now it's not a particularly long level, but when you get to the end, you then go into the dinosaur's mouth. But keep topping up your energy whenever you can with whatever you can find. But again, it's brilliant. Right, we're near the end already. Now pick up everything and then you're gonna hit him right where it hurts, right on the top of his baseball cap. There we go. Score 3290. There we go. He felt that now, didn't he? In we go. Okay, we continue from here. However, he's a very good swimmer. However, not the sort of water get down to your local distance centre, but he's doing a good job anyway. Now, these are a lot of the things that appear in the back of your throat. But if it hits you, it takes away a lot of energy. 
and the man eventually gets taken away from you to determine what actually hits you. If it's something big, you'll probably lose one great big heart. But if something small, like a fish, then you'll just take away a little bit of a heart. But you don't want to lose any heart anyway. But there's plenty of sections where you get additional hearts and additional lives. And you can also upgrade your hearts, I believe, to a maximum of five. But there's not many of them in the game, but if you do use the continue, you lose it. And that can change a game, especially on the last level, which I found out in previous times on the Bega. Now, Bond can also collect pieces of meat as power-ups, and these lend him special abilities to make him stronger. There are three stages of the power a normal self, a second stage during which you can stunt enemies with hands to the ground, and a third stage which protects you temporary invincible. Which you'll see again very soon. You can also attack underwater, even though this isn't technically water. And you can also be invincible underwater. Over there is a heart. Even though our energy is maxed out, we're going to collect it anyway. Right, there we go. And there is a great big piece of meat, which is going to make him very, very <laughs> off his trolley. There we go. And up here on the top left section, there is a secret, which is additional life. There's a lot of secret lives in this game. And this should be easier on a pad. It is. That is actually a lot easier. There we go. Not only when you're in this form, you're strong, you're also fast. Meat can be found in two variants, a big meat and a small meat. The effects of the meat become additive to wear off over time. The small meat gives Bond the second stage of meat and the large one takes him to stage three. Right, on we go. Not far away from the next boss. And I've never seen it before on the PC engine. Will it be easier or will it be more difficult? I just do not know. Right. I don't know what these things are, but you can hit them with your head. And you can also juggle with them. Probably not a good thing to do in this state, while you're swimming. Right, 4,640. That was a big, big hit. When the third stage wears off, he returns to the second state and remains there for a while until going back to his regular bonk. Eating either size of meat while in the third stage of meat will power you up to the timer of bonk's big power. Right, let's go. 4,890. Take one stage at a time. Nice and steady wins the race. I love the music. And over here is a secret heart. Then he said life. There you go. In one end, out the other. Here we go. Boss battle. Read it on. I'm ready. <laughs> Down we go. See this for the absolute first time. There he is! Now what you're trying to do is hit him on the head. Now he has bubble attacks. Now I have to admit, this is actually a little bit easier because you, your character doesn't jump quite as high after doing a headbutt. So this is actually a little, lot easier. Hey, that was a doddle! That was easier than the media! Brilliant! Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to read it, even though I technically know what it is, saying it's something about banana trees, but unfortunately I can't read that language. But there we go, it's a brilliant game. Absolutely superb. Bonk's Adventure. Next on the list, what about a little bit of Salamander? Copyrights Konami, 1986, 1991. Only played it on the CC4 and on the Xbox. Okay, this is Salamander, retitled Life Force in North America and Japanese arcade with release. In Europe, known as Life Force Salamander, is a scrolling arcade shooter game released by Konami in 1986 as a spin off of Gradius. Salamander introduced a simplified power up system, two player cooperative gameplay, and both horizontal and vertical scrolling stages. Some of these were used for future greatest games. Salamander was followed by a sequel in 1996 titled Salamander 2. It's never played. But again, this is playing so well on the PC engine, I'm really impressed with it. But this is actually the third version I've played now. I do own it on the C64 and the Xbox, which is a compilation. But again, it's a brilliant game, but challenging. I've never finished them. But again, it's so good. Now we get these bits. Now I believe four is the maximum you can get. So we're one away. And each one you can fire from. So you can go from nothing to absolute extreme in a very short space of time. But again, it's one of those games if you die, you lose everything. All we need now is a little bit more extra speed. We're very slow at the moment. And you don't want to be slow in a game like this. But the game is quite tactical in its ways. You can try and blast your way through the wall. And you've got to do that to reveal the next boss. There's one boss per level. At the moment, we have skips. We'll be killed by some skips. But we're now firing all cylinders. With this, it should be a breeze. But it is challenging. Now, I don't know how many lives we've got. I can't see. My webcam's in the way. No idea. 
Right. We're nearly at the boss. So best to get him into a line and go for it. Maybe for a safe arrival. So, brilliant. Now the boss is actually a brain, quite similar to the end boss of the game, Menace. Right. Now it takes a while to reveal itself, but it has a, an eyeball right in the front of it, and that's its weakness. It also has arms. Right. Should be doable. Should be. Now notice you get a little bit slow down with your firing on all cylinders. And at the moment I am, but there we go, it paid off. Superb. Stage two. I feel a little bit greedy, but this is extreme firepower. We don't have to really have to move. We're firing everywhere. So brilliant, not only are we firing everywhere, but also I've got a decent shield. So, wherever we go on the screen, we are making contact with something. But, these asteroids, you can't kill. So that ruined my fun a little bit. So we've got to move around and avoid all that. There we go, our type. I know, shocking, isn't it? Blast off and attack the evil Bardo Empire. This is on the PC Engine. Okay, this is another game, this is R-Type, a horizontal scoring shooter buff arcade game released and developed by IRM in 1987. The player controls a starship called the R9 Arrowhead, it's ever to destroy the Bido. A powerful alien race bent on wiping out all of mankind. The R9 can require a glowing or particular device called a force, presented with enemy firepower and advising the additional firepower of your own. The arcade version was distributed by Nintendo in North America and was the last arcade title Nintendo distributed. And it's brilliant, but this is on the PC Engine this time. I have played it before. I played it at an expo earlier this year, actually, and actually completed it on my first attempt. Or should we say, completed it to the point where I could complete it. Now, you're probably confused about that, but yeah, I'll explain. Now, bear in mind, when I was at the expo, it was very, very loud, which I respect for a place like that. So I didn't actually hear the sound effects or the music all that well, but it's great to hear it now. But yes, when I got to level 4 and finished it, there was this movie section which I've never seen before and my mouth just dropped. I was like, wow, I've never seen this before. And then 5, level 5 never materialised. I thought, that's strange, I've never seen that before. So I went back to the main menu because that's what it does, it takes you there. And I had another go. And it's like the same thing happened again, I got past level 4, no level 5. But anyway, it was an interesting moment for me, but when I found out for some of my all subscribers, I didn't realise that some of these PC engines have multiple cartridges. And our site was one of those ones that needed multiple cartridges, but unfortunately the Expo didn't have the second cartridge. So, I couldn't play a Beyond 4. But it was still a really, really nice moment for me, and again, it's just so good. It plays so well, it really, really does. Our site was the first game in the run of IBM's sitting bit with M72 arcade system. Initially Joe and Monstar, the force was based on Dunk Beetles. The development team drew inspiration from Gradius, Aliens and the work of H.R. Geiger. The game's title stems from the word Ray, as in the Ray of Light, in reference to the player's Ray-like weapons used out throughout the game. Right, another boss battle. I've killed this boss so many times. Let's do it again, but on a different system. And it's superb. Brilliant. Absolutely superb game. <laughs> Okay, this is level 2. Our type was celebrated by critics for its graphics and gameplay, although it received criticism for its high level difficulty. It's commonly cited to be one of the best shoot em up video games, as well as one of the greatest video games of all time. Its success would prompt the creation of several sequels and spin off games, along with home ports and releases for digital distribution services. A remake of the game was released for the Game Boy Color in the year 2000 as R Type DX. While the 3D remake R-Type Dimensions was released on Xbox 360 in 2009 and later for PlayStation 3 in 2014. Microsoft Windows and Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4 in 2018 and iOS in 2019. Again, it looks absolutely spectacular. Now let's see how we do on this time. But anyway, weapons are brilliant in this game. But of course, if you die, you lose everything. Now you have the force that can go on the front or the rear of the R9. Now you also have a beam. Now you hold the fire button down to activate the beam. The longer time you hold it down, the bigger the beam. And how powerful it will be will determine how much time you hold it down. Now there's a little bit of a flicker from time to time, but it's not too bad at all. Take nothing away from the game, take nothing away from this version, it is brilliant. Anyway, 
Next boss is on the horizon. Let's try and do it the same way I normally would do it. Blind the poor guy. But anyway, weapons is good. At the moment, we have one bit. Not two yet. Not yet. Anyway, don't get two at this early stage. But anyway, hopefully we do later on. But anyway, get in position. I'm going to blind him with his eyes open. But it's not open all the time. But yes, a little bit of flicker. But there we go. We're, we're hanging in there. Just. But anyway, you cannot smear a cat in that area. Right, let's keep on shooting. No need for beams on this one. Just keep the enemy at bay. Boop and pow! Have some of that. Brilliant. Level 3. Now, Hudson Soft Defender is a fairly accurate port of our time that was released in 2016. Although it suffered from a slightly lower resolution, reduced colour palette, spike flickering, and slowdown. Due to the slightly reduced resolution, the playthrough also scrolls slightly in the vertical axis. When the player's ship approaches the top or bottom of the screen. The Japanese release was split across two cars called Hue Cars, titled R Type 1 and R Type 2. And later, North American release contained the entire game on one card. The so Turf Grand 16 version of R Type has a boss at the end of level 6, rather than the prolonged wave of, white of enemies that appears in other versions. Now, I've never ever seen that. So I'd be interested to see that. Now I have to admit, yes, there is a quite a lot of screen flicker here. But I've not noticed any slowdown, not yet anyway. But take nothing away from the game, it really, really, really does look good. Now this is a difficult level, and I've noticed it on some versions, but not all of them. It's a mystery. But these guns are on the back, they respawn. Now I've never really understood why, but I've noticed not all versions are the case. But let's see what this one happens. What it does here, do they respawn or do they not respawn? That is the most difficult bit of the level. Anyway, boss battle is actually the heart of the spaceship. Now, one full beam shot would normally do the trick. But let's see what we do. So, charge up that beam. And I've noticed those guns did not respawn. But there we go. I'm really interested to see that stage six boss. Brilliant. Okay, we're approaching this mystery level 6 boss, which apparently is only on the TurboGrafx-16 version, which I've never seen. The trouble is, my R9 is so fast. And when it's like this, it's very difficult to control. Right, it should be around here. different at all. It's exactly the same. <laughs> it's exactly the same. What's it talking about? This is level six. It's exactly the same. Oh, this is very difficult at this speed. Oh, hang on. We're still going. Right, I've never seen this before. Oh my lord, okay. Whoa! Okay, I have never seen that before. Wowzers! Okay. Okay, I'm having another go. The trouble is now, I've gone from stupidly fast to stupidly slow. But, I'm going to give it another try. But it's going to be just as difficult now because I'm really slow. Down here is a token, so it's a little bit of extra speed. But now, let's see how we do. Yeah, you don't want to be too slow. You don't want to be too f fast. Now, this is not the tactic I normally do. I don't normally put the force on the back. But this might work. Goodness me! Right, okay. Let's see how we do this time. So watch out for any fireballs. Crikey, okay. Where's its weakness? What's that thing down there? 
Okay, another go. The trouble is, I don't have any lives left. They're all gone. But this is so difficult, because fire will go straight through the force. It's not really worth having a force on a level like this. Or boss like this, should we say. Now you've got to try and shoot that thing on the right. The trouble is, it's moving up and down. And it's never in the right place when you want it to be. And the one on the bottom will shoot only when you go above it. Whereas the one at the top is shooting like there's no tomorrow. Right. So again, just wait for the right time. I know what you're thinking. Go to the top. I can't get up there. I've tried. I just can't get the right time to get up there. This is so difficult. can't believe I'm playing something new on my favourite game of all time at the age of 38 years old. I didn't know it existed. Trump is again, you've got to... Oh my goodness, mate! Ah! See, so again, it's not where you want it to be. I'm ready to pounce and it ain't there. Again. How much hits does it take? Right, come on! Nope, it's still alive and well. But yeah, fire and force is not a nice combination. Yahoo! Fantastic! That is so difficult! <laughs> Brilliant! Stace, it's clear! There we go, Super Darius, brilliant, 1990 in NEC Avenue. Okay, next on the list is Super Darius, a 1987 horizontal scoring arcade shooter map, defense and published by Chato, players control a starship named the Silver Hawk, when it's special to destroy it, it builds an empire before they wipe out the planet Darius. Its gameplay evolves traversing through a series of scrolling levels while destroying enemies and collecting power-up icons. It's notable for its three-screen paramount display. Again, it's brilliant, but I do have this on the Mega Drive, but I think this one's a little bit more difficult than the Mega Drive, because enemies take more hits to die. But also, like the Mega Drive, you want to fire your bullets and your bombs at the same time. You'll press both buttons down at the same time. That's quite painful for your fingers and thumbs. But it's one of those ones that when you die, you lose everything. Now you shoot a red enemy, and you get a red token, which is bullets. Shoot a green enemy, you get a green token, which is bombs. And blue is a arm. Also known as shield. But there we go. Now those ones explode and you've got to keep your distance. But anyway, it's difficult to keep collecting those shields. They are very, very important if you want to stay alive. And there's also bosses at the end of each level. Right, I've lost my shield. That didn't take long. Right, we need a bloom. I love the music. Really good. Now when you beat the boss, you then have to choose which zone you want to go to next. And that's appeared in quite a lot of these games. Now, I haven't played many of them, but my favourite one is on the PlayStation 1, which is G Darius. And that one had a capture ball, which you can capture any enemy on the screen, apart from a boss battle, that would be too extreme. And use it against the enemies. You can use it to either use it as a shield, or just for firepower. But anyway, that's another game. Anyway, free lives intact, and this is Zone A. Right, and I'd love to long play one of these games in the future. Anyway, we need shields. Now we're fine, double bullets now. Keep your distance. Right. Blue, yes, have you now. Good. The more you collect, the stronger and longer it will last. Before I don't hit anything really, really big and dangerous. Blimey. What a long level! It does seem to be a little bit repeating on this one. But anyway, bosses, 9 times out of 10, are fish related bosses. We're well, not far away. Now eventually you can get more bombs, you actually shoot up and down. But we're getting there, but it's slow. Like my finger and thumb is on the brink of falling off. It really is painful. There we go! A huge battleship 
King Fossil is approaching fast. They always do. Now this one you've got to shoot quite a few different areas of its body. Mostly its fins. But we've got to get rid of its defences first. But I love the music, once again. Right. We should be okay with his firepower. But he does have some good firepower of his own. Now the difficult one is at the bottom, or the, the back fin, should we say. That's quite a difficult one to shoot, it's quite minimal in size. The top one's not so bad, you've got to shoot him in the gob. But only when his mouth is open, but it's not open all the time. Right, he's lost both fins. Oh my lord, that was close. Boom pow! My shield was gone, but he's gone as well. There we go. Fantastic. And now you get a choice of where you want to go. Just don't get killed while doing it. Because there's a great big line that appear right in the centre of the screen. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. It might kill you. I'm not sure. Possibly. I reckon so. <laughs> anyway, on we go. Zone B. The game was created by a small team. In contrast to other similar games which feature mechanical insect-like enemies, Darius uses aquatic creatures like fish and crabs for its enemies and on-screen field bosses. Its large arcade cabinet based on Chateau's earlier paranormal display game, Laser Grand Prix in 1983, was designed to provide a cinematic atmosphere and stand out from the other games at the time. The soundtrack was created with Chateau's house band, Zantata, the majority being composed through the combination of FM synthesis and sampling. But there we go, I love this music. What a great tune. Now, we're very close to getting the next upgrade. Uh, all we need now is one more red token. Now, in G Darius, when you get all the reds and you go on to the next weapon, it's laser, which is rubbish. So I'm hoping it's not going to be laser here. Hopefully it can be something better. But hopefully, provided we don't die, we should do it. But all we need is another red. And hopefully two more greens will be firing in two directions with bombs. But we don't have an arm yet, so we need to get some blues on the horizon here. But yeah, this music is tremendous. Right, now I think you do actually die if you hit the terrain. I think so. But anyway, you can shoot some of the enemy's bullets, not all of them. But again, my finger and thumb is extremely painful right now, but we still don't have a shield. So I'm doing quite well. I just don't want to jinx it. Right. Where's all the icons at? I really hope we're going to get one. I really hope the next weapon is not going to be a laser. Now, lasers in shoe ups they're not all bad. But the occasional one, they're actually really diabolical. But, yeah, we're still waiting for it. But in the meantime, we're shooting three bullets. Which is good. Really good. But anyway, look at that arm. One more, and we've maxed out the arm. Oh, my lord. Ah! Just don't mess it up. Right, the next boss is the electric fan. Now, all bosses, well, most of them are fish related items, enemies, anything that's in the water. Well, certainly the ones that I've seen so far, anyway. But anyway, we can't be too far away. But hopefully, with this, we should be okay. We should be fine. We should be firing all cylinders. But again, it's going to be a difficult boss. They always are. Because their bullets are very, very strong and very, very fast. Right, bring on the next boss. A huge battleship approaching electric fan. And it's also approaching fast. Right. Again, get rid of these defences. And yeah, wait for him to get into position. And then we're going to shoot for the weakness. Which I believe is the front. Now he has lasers, and they are deadly. This one's not as difficult as the one we just did. Because some of his bullets you can shoot. And the only got to shoot is a lot simpler. There we go, that was even easier. But pow! We still don't have the next weapon upgrade. There we go, what a game. This is such a good system. It is so good. Oh, here we go. What is it? Oh, it's a laser. 
lasers rubbish in a game like this. Oh, I don't believe it. Okay, another boss on the way, but we have a laser. But in its defense, it's not as bad as the one in Gidamus. But it's still not fantastic. Um, but yeah, you want something a little bit more thicker than this. A bit better width to it. Not something that's really, really thin. But we do have a super. But if something super powerful goes through it, then yes, it'll be an instant kill. But anyway, you've got to shoot the areas on either side of its head. But also, it's shooting from its tail, but you can shoot those bullets. Yeah, also, I've noticed with these boss battles, if you take too long, then more bullets will arrive on the scene. So you don't want to take too long. Anyway, one of them is blown up. So what we're going to do now is blow up the other side. We still have our super. Right. Again, I love the music. Very edge on your seat sort of music, isn't it? Right, super's gone. Let's do this the hard way. There you go! Another successful defeat. <laughs> there you go, brilliant. There you go, super game. I really, really, I'm loving this game. Ready and go. Let's put an end to this video with a classic ghouls and ghosts situation. See how this one performs. Now I've got so many versions of this now for buying these minis, but they're all very, very difficult. I have to admit, I do prefer Ghouls and Ghosts in its way, because in this game you can fight up. You can't do that in Ghosts and Goblins, not the versions I've played anyway. But that really does save your bacon. But the problem with these games is not only they're difficult, but also you don't get your armour back enough. And you can lose it very, very easily. And enemies respawn all the time. But this is really, really good. There's no slowdown whatsoever. It's really, really performing well. I don't want to get that, I want to stick with what I've got, but the best weapon, I think, is the dagger. But shooting up in the air is really good. Right, let's see how we do. And I can also have chests, treasure chests. Now, nine times out of ten, it gives you something bad. You can turn to an old man, or maybe even a duck. Now, when you're an old man, you can still fire. When you're a duck, you can't. But you can jump. Right, avoid the guillotines. Right, we haven't maxed out the armour yet, but when you do, you get additional power. But again, one hit and you're back in your box of shorts. Right, we've got to get rid of some of these birds. There's so many birds. Right. Now the worst weapon is the torch. It always is the torch. I don't want the torch. That can really change things. Right. Now this next section is incredibly windy, which affects your sprinting, and also affects your jumping. Now, no double jump on this game. With so much time you end up retracing your steps. Because these things you can't kill when they're going around in circles. And some of them do hold weapons. But not as often as you like. Okay, ready and go. That's one way of getting your armour back. But luckily this game has checkpoints and also it resets your timer. But anyway, we need a better weapon. We need better armour. That's asking a bit much to get both of them. But it can happen from time to time. But again, we'll fight with wind and rain. Right. Dagger. Yes. Brilliant. We've got one of my wishes granted. Right. I don't know what these things are called, but in the Amiga version, they appear so often. It's difficult to avoid. Right, on we go. And when they shoot, they shoot multiple skulls. And up here, there's a crazy pig, which takes quite a lot of hits, but with this weapon, it should be fine. But some of these enemies don't get a lot of reaction time. Right, come on. TV's gonna turn itself up again, which you can't see. Oh dear. Where's the pig? Where is the pig? Did I kill it while my TV's trying to turn itself off? I have no idea. Oh, there you are. Right. Get rid of you. Go up. Right. There's another one. 
Right, it's very rare I get to the boss with armor and the dagger. There we go, that's not too shabby. But it's always challenging. And I can also throw your weapon while jumping backwards. And that is a brilliant thing. Boo-boo pow! There we go! I'm proud of that! That is brilliant! What a good version! Once again, take he for coming in! There you go, puts his arms up in celebration! Not only has he done it, he's got armour as well! Okay, level 2! Great level, but challenging! I love the music this level! But it's challenging because we have these tortoises! Can you kill them when they're not in their shell? When they are, they're bouncing up and down on pogo sticks! Do you want to be crushed by a tortoise? Trouble, you spend so much time backtracking. Now, on this one, they actually fire. I wasn't aware of that. Oh, we made it through. Now, this is where we find the worst bridge known to man. It's worse than the one in the Temple of Doom. So many breakages. A lot of luck here, because down below is an enemy that consumes you. Whether you've got armour or not. Right, first bit done. And also they're throwing fine enemies. This is make it a tad more difficult. Okay. Trump, I don't know where they are. A lot of trial and error here. Oh my lord. Quick, 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 go, go, go. Right, flames. Go, go, go. Now around here is a gargoyle. Return of an old friend. They're not stupid, these things. They really aren't. You evil thing! You took my armor away! My lord, can I just help run him? God, bloody, how different was that? My lord! However, that should be a checkpoint. Right, do not judge your set. It's supposed to bounce up and down like this. Right, another difficult- Whoa! Another difficult boss on the way. No, you can't be serious! I'm an old man, but I can fire. I just can't fire as often. Right. Oh, you see? Game over. There we go. That's it in my video, people. Tremendous. Brilliant. There you go, people. That's it in my video. I'm really absolutely tickled pink with this. Brilliant. I highly recommend it. But anyway, this is Jamie Warden's Games. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like this, comment, and share. Please subscribe to my channel, Facebook fan page, Facebook to Twitch. Just type in Warden's Games, you'll find it fairly easy. Please remember to click the bell icon, notify you if you're oh, fantastic. Not to do all videos, refresh your fun plays, have cheats, have a beat making, and live streams on Friday night. You'll get time to make clocks. I'm not ready to do it. Ciao, bye. See ya. Blimey. Ugh! What was that? Bubby and Bobby, the characters humans names, start once again as the main characters. We take it. Uh, uh, my lord. Okay, so the game, this is Rainbow Islands. Sort of. <laughs> sort of. Right but wrong. Okay, so the game this is Splatterhouse, a beat em up arcade game developed and published by Namco. It's the first in the series of games released for home consoles and computer control. <laughs> the power control is a scenic spaceship named the Upper. The upper, 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 upper. <coughs> <coughs> okay, this is another game, this is Bonk's Adventure, playing for the absolute first time. Bonk's Adventure is a scrolling platform game developed by Red Company and Atlas and released in 1989 in Japan and North and United. Blah, 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 blah. Brilliant. Right, how many lives have we got? I don't know, my webcam's in the way. Uh. Rest. Nothing handy. Always bad news. Oh, I don't want this. Oh, no. The worst weapon known to man. Well, we'll see how we do. Mind you, that's not so bad. Never mind, we can't have it all. The R9 arrowhead, it is an effect. Efforts. Efforts, Jamie. Efforts. I feel like your efforts trying to do this correctly. Uh, the online requires a glowing orbital device called a 
force. <laughs> in the year 2000, while a 3D remake, R-Type Dimensions, was released for the Xbox 360 in 2009, and later for Xbox... No... PlayStation... Oh. Ah! Crikey, that's close. Oh my lord! This is a changing level, it always has been. Always will be. And even though I've played it so many times, I still don't remember where every enemy appears from. A lot of uh, try and error this one. But yeah, the force can be a handful at times. It really can. All right, boss battle. All right, boss battle. Bring it on. Let's go. Right, I believe you're safe on this far right section. That's what I did on the expo, I remember that well. Right, so at the expo, here, there was a cutoff point and you couldn't go any further, but there was this movie which I've never seen before. And it carries on, there we go. <laughs> well done, Jasper, you make the outsides. <laughs> oh, dear, catch me up. What are you doing, Jasper? <laughs> 